uh, this uh, approach uh, after we have seen the complication of the pelvic floor meshes and everything. So we are, we, uh, we are opening a new window for all of you. Uh, this lecture is going to be a practical for whole session that you have uh, thankfully and barely stand with us for these two hours. Okay, so it is the MR, MR, surgery physiotherapy in pelvic floor, a breakthrough in the treatment and the success rate. How to incorporate the imaging with the surgeon and the physiotherapist. And um, so one, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to put it like in question and answer, question and answer to make it fast and to let you know what exactly you need to start and to go ahead with establishing the imaging of the pelvic floor in your hospital. You are most welcomed whenever you need to come in Cairo University, the, the unit is there. We have a team over there and you can find there for any help you need. So. Let us start with number one questions. Why MRI if the patient has the symptoms related to one compartment? If the patient is coming for stress incontinence, why MRI? If he has anal incontinence of pelvic organ prolapse, why MRI? Because all the three pelvic compartments work as one unit. This video is showing exactly that all the pelvic organ work as one unit. This is the bladder. This is the pupil cervical fascia. This is the anal sphincter. Here is come the puporectalis muscle, and then come the iliococcygeus muscle. So I assure you that whenever the patient has one compartment problem, sooner or later it will uh, be projected on the other compartment, and that's why MRI is even if the patient has symptoms related to one compartment. So let us learn how to report. Okay, the second question, what are the anatomical structure you need to visualize? We agreed that the pelvic organ kept in place by the interaction between the pelvic floor muscle, the endopelvic fascia, and the pelvic organ. So what you need to see is the pelvic floor muscle, you already learned where to see, and the endopelvic fascia in the static, and the pelvic organ in the dynamic MR difficography. Let us summarize, and okay, so what's next? I know where to look, I want to apply. So let us go for it. To learn where to look for this anatomical structure, you need to visualize. Okay, we are summarizing all the session now. So you have the CNE MR images in the static, axial, and coronal, and one information you will get from this. The pelvic floor muscle is weak or intact. For the defecography, remember, you only get the pelvic organ descent. Very simple. For the axial, for the last time, you have to go for the urethral, vaginal, and the anal sphincter complex. So, if your patient is complaining of stress incontinence, you have to go thoroughly through the urethral support system. And, and similar, if the posterior compartment, then you have to go to the anal sphincter complex. How can your MR report become critical in decision making? What my aim from this session is to raise your attention and your enthusiasm so that every one of you, when you are going back to your hospital, is getting interest to establish the pelvic floor. So I want you to learn how to make the decision with the surgeon, with the surgeon in your hospital. So you must have a scheme to follow. What scheme you have is that in the static images, you evaluate the pelvic supporting structure, the anal sphincter complex. And in the dynamic, as we learned, you have to see the descent of the pelvic organ and you have the pelvic floor muscle in the dynamic. You can have a screenshot for this very simple template. You can open it on your mobile and you can follow it. It's easy, simple, and so practically applied. Now for the implication. Now, I mean, after knowing the scheme and applying it, how to make use of it. This is what we are going to learn right now. I'm going to show you how an interpretive and a conclusive MR report in the SEOI, POP, and anal incontinence can be critical in decision making. Sound good? Then keep, keep with us in the following minutes. So I'm going to give you two practical examples of two cases with anal incontinence how the patient's coming with anal incontinence and your MRI is make, will make a lot of difference. Now in these images, as you have learned, this is the anal sphincter complex, and if you can see here, this is the, on the normal side, this is the internal anal sphincter. What you can see on the left side is hypo-intense deformation indicating severe scarring. So these patients need surgical repair and physiotherapy. 
and this is what you are going to deliver to your surgeon. Okay, and this is how a conclusive MR report showing the predominant defect of anal incontinence is due to injury of the anal sphincter. So when you confirm for your surgeon that the patient has injury of the anal sphincter, it's not for physiotherapy. While this patient has anal incontinence, remember, the same complaint. But this patient on the dynamic MR images, you can look the degree of what? the degree of muscle weakness, the levator plate muscle weakness. This is the clinical impact of what? When I went through the anal sphincter complex of this patient in the coronal, this is an intact puperectalis and this is the normal external anal sphincter. So what? What is the indication for the management of this, leg, for this patient? The problem solving is that a conclusive report has been pointing the specific anatomic defect. What is this? This is marked muscle weakness, due to marked muscle weakness. So let us have a pause here and learn a few about the physiotherapy. I am honored to have my co-workers, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Amira and Dr. Wala. We have established a communication with Cairo University Physiotherapy, and she has thankfully given me this presentation. Uh, so this is the indication for the physical therapy. There is a huge indication for the physical therapy. We are giving you an opening eye about what's there in the pelvic floor and physiotherapy. So, for example, we have something like stretching exercise. We have, uh, this is called like cones, which is strengthen the muscles. This is what they call the trigger point release and the internal massage. And this is the electrical stimulation of the muscle. I'm not going more than this. If you need something, you can contact Dr. Amir and Dr. Wala. So for this patient, when you have this patient with predominant defect and the anal sphincter is intact, have the courage and tell the surgeon that the anal sphincter is intact and just send the patient to the physiotherapy. Maybe he's not happy, but after a while, you will be happy and the surgeon will be happy. And then other cases, we have cooperated between us and the surgeon. So for example, this patient will need which type of exercise? It will need the strengthening exercise using the cones, put it in the vagina, and asking the patient to contract the muscle. They have a w overwhelming me with the information and how they can help our patient. OK, what's next? The multidisciplinary approach, how it can work for other cases as a stress urinary incontinence. So the answer, so the question is, is there a difference between patient with a stress urinary incontinence? As you have seen, patient with anal incontinence got different underlying pathology. Do you agree or not? Okay, so let us see the stress incontinence. Sound very interesting. So can the MRI answer the question? There is difference underlying pathology? The surprise is the answer is yes. So let us see, this is the uh, urethral supporting system consists of the puperectalis muscle over here. You have, become, you have become expert now. The urethral ligament, which is the suburethral ligament over here, and level three into pelvic fascia. Okay, time for applied anatomy and time for you to interact with me. So we have these two patients having stress urinary incontinence. They cough, they lose urine. The clinician need is a test to allow for the specific underlying pathology. We are going to learn how to do it. So when you will go through the MRI of these two patients, you will find that both of them is leaking urine. Yes? Okay, I need you to answer me. So let us uh, wake up and finish this very nice application of what you have learned. So these two patients have loss of urine. Then you, as an expert, go for the static images and see the underlying pathology. Voila. This is level 3 in the pelvic fascia because they have the mustache sign, while this is the effect of the puperectalis muscle. What's the difference? The difference is that this patient might get help from a physiotherapy, but this patient, there is a muscle tear. So you can stratify the patient. I promise you that if you return back with this new insight in the pelvic floor, the surgeon will be fascinated and will definitely establish collaboration between, you, uh, between them and your department. So the answer, can the MRI answer the clinician need? The answer is yes. Okay, now for you. This patient, for a, a test examination module, this patient has 23 years old, Gravida 2. She has a positive stress test and were sent for MRI. During rest, she has a closed bladder neck while she's losing urine. Think, have a look. Do you see the bladder neck? It's high, yes? 
So it's not anymore the old theory that when the patient is leaking urine, she has a drop of the blood or neck. It's not there anymore. The answer is in the static images. So let us see what you are answering now. So now, this is, is the axial images of the same patient. So please answer me. The subureseral ligament is number one, two, or three. The answer is, which of these is the subureseral ligament? This is the subureseral ligament, or this one, or this one? Two and three, so it's D. Okay, so this is the subureseral ligament on both sides, showing tear in the ligament, okay? Number two, the green arrow, point two, mustache sign, periureseral pupo-rectalis subureseral ligament. What do you think, Niveen? Mustache sign, thank you. So uh, um, the green arrow point to a mustache sign. You become an expert in the imaging. Let us go for the vaginal supporting system and let me show you what's the cause of the saddleback sign Professor Heba has shown us. So in the normal, we can see the pupocervical fascia and supporting the bladder reflected by straight posterior renal bladder wall. So if there is detachment of the fascia, what will happen? What do you expect? If there is a gap here, what do you expect? Basma. Sagging of the urinary bladder, so you will have this. Whether you are going to see it or not in the MRI, the surprise, you will see it. And this is what we call paravaginal defect. Time for applied anatomy. How can you make use of it? Sorry. Now, this patient has a pelvic organ prolapse, and in the dynamic images, we can see that the amount of destruction of the pelvic floor and the amount of weakness we have. So let us go. Where are you going to look? You want to pinpoint for your clinician. Is it the muscle or the fascia? So let us see. You will answer. So this is the dynamic showing the marked levator plate sagging. There's anterior uh, bladder base descent, uterine descent, and rectal prolapse. So, what do you think? Is it the fascia or the muscle? Hmm. Anyone can raise the hand and answer. Niveen? It is the muscle. Thank you. Now, my turn is to pass this information. What this can help your surgeon. When you tell your surgeon that this patient, the fascia is intact, you know the, amount, the type of operation they do, they do plication for the fascia. So if they go and did plication of the fascia while it is intact, the patient might got in obstructed urination. This is very important, and you will be impressed by the surgeon knowing this information. So this is how we have a conclusive MR report showing that the predominant defect in this patient is pelvic floor muscle. Time for assessment module. Now this patient is a 40 years old, has a pelvic organ prolapse, so uh, this is the red arrow, point to the levator plate. Normal, abnormal, or none of the above? It is A, B, C, or D? C, C, I heard C, that's great, okay. Then it's abnormally sagging levator plate. The second surprise, the vaginal support system is the level is normal or having a defect? The answer is, oops, sorry. It's A, normal. Okay, this is a bonus. Let us go. Okay, so the predominant defect here is A, B, C, or D. I can't hear anything. A. Okay, so the answer is yes. It is muscle weakness. Now, I want other from the audience, not uh, Basma or Niveen. This is another patient with pelvic organ prolapse, and now this is the fascia, this is the static, Im this is the dynamic images, and this is the axial images. The predominant defect is muscle weakness, muscle tear, or bilateral paravaginal defect. Hmm. Anyone? It is C, bilateral paravaginal defect. Excellent. So C, this is how it goes. Very quickly, we are going through the uh, obstructed defecation. أنا قللت ال أنا وفرت لك وقت في المحاضرة الأولانية فممكن نزود ثلاث دقايق. Okay. شكرا. 
Uh, okay, so the patient, this is very important to learn uh, um, because when you start to work in obstructed defecation, the patient said, the important thing is that she has a difficulty in the even with a soft stool. He has an obstructed defecation, even we have a soft stool. This could spark your attention that there is a problem with the muscle. So let us see what is going here. So this patient, this is the dynamic. Keep an eye on the anal canal. It's opening right now. It's opening here. Okay, here you go. Did you see it? Again, it will open again and again. So let us analyze these images. The anorectal angle. This was not included in the guidelines because I saved it to where it could be applied. So here we can see the anal, can, the anal uh, posterior anorectal angle. How can you measure? You measure it bes uh, between the posterior rectal wall and the anal canal. So when you see this patient, and this patient has a persistently acute posterior anorectal angle, what could be your diagnosis? You can compare the normal and the acute angle. And when you see this acute angle, you are eligible to diagnose spastic puporectalis muscle. We now forget about the surgery. In these cases, there is no surgery. What do you use for the physiotherapy? Dr. Uh, Amira uh, told us that when you have an overactive bladder, you have to do the biofeedback. Which things you can use? It's very nice to just to have a, a very superficial idea. This is an electrode where they give electrical stimulation. This is a biofeedback that sends the contraction of the muscle, and this is a surface electrode. So. According to their advice, those patients with uh, puporectalis, uh, uh, synergia or spastic puporectalis, they use any of these modalities to relax the muscle. They teach the patient down training of the muscle. So this patient is physiotherapy. This is a multidisciplinary approach. We reach a, a diagnosis, we recommend it for the surgeon, and we have the patient to help. Now, this patient, this totally different story. This is the closing master scene of today's lecture. This is a very critical patient, and let me explain why. So this patient has obstructed defecation, but let us analyze slowly the MR finding. She has a cystocele, she has a uterine descent, and she has marked levator plate, and the anal canal is not seen in this sequence. So we repeat the MRI, and we can see what's going on. There is two arrow now coming, and then you will see how to diagnose this case. You can see here that there is marked, uh, um, there is marked uh, a narrowing of the anal sphincter complex. So here it is. Okay. You can see? Can you see how narrow is the anal canal? Okay. So this is very interesting because when we decided to do the physiotherapy for this patient, we start with the dilatation of the anal sphincter. But before total dilatation of the anal sphincter, Dr. Amira and Dr. Wala had has to strengthen the muscle of the patient. Otherwise, the patient is going to have anal incontinence. This is how the MRI can really help the patients nowadays to the, for the choice of treatment and the management plan, maybe we can save the patient the post-operative um, uh, hazards of the mesh implication. So according to their advice, they can help this patient with an underactive pelvic floor. First, first, they are going to help the anal canal dilatation by one of these. This is the dilator, and they do manual therapy and trigger point release. When they open the anal canal, they go and do strengthening of the muscle. Very nice. I hope that you appreciate that it's very nice uh, how when you get so involved in the MRI of the pelvic floor, you are opening new hope for the patient, new hope for the surgeon, and giving them a very uh, good strength. So MR imaging of the pelvic floor is a one-step examination, visualizing all the three compartments to answer the clinician's need. The question, does it really answer the clinician's need? The answer is yes. Combining the static and the dynamic imaging bridge the gap between the radiologist and the clinician, and it's critically shared in the decision making, and this is what I really wish that all of you become critical in taking the decision about the pelvic floor and to address the clinician needs. The take home message is basic science really matter, 
and only through going back to basics, new horizon and set into action. Cairo University is very proud to launch the first pelvic floor unit in Egypt. And before closing, I am obliged to thank all my professor, especially Professor Tariq, Dr. Ahmed, late Professor Dr. Hazem, my professors in Cairo University. I would haven't reached anything without their approval and launching of the unit. Thank you very much. And I always close my talk with this uh, uh, quote, always be guided by the light of knowledge and wisdom to shape your future, the future of your country, and the future of the world. Thank you very much. Shukran. Um, if you are interested, please hold on and move to Hall C, where Dr. Ola is preparing a huge number of cases for the ultrasound, so don't miss